Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to the Ignite service at First United Methodist Church. If you will, please stand and join us. We're going to worship God this morning. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Like wildfire in our very soul, Holy Spirit, come and fade us down. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom. We seek your kingdom first. And we thirst, refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and pride. To see the captive's hearts release, to hurt the sick, the poor, at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. Build your kingdom here. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. With this nation back. Change the air. kingdom here. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. When this nation back. Change the There we go. There I am. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Brittany Dearlam, and I am honored to uh, be here to worship with you guys this morning. Um, we have a few announcements and upcoming events. Vacation Bible School is going to be this coming Saturday, August 7th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We are so excited. Children three years old all the way through fifth grade are invited. 
If you will go to fumcvictoria.com slash children, you can register your uh, student. Um, a couple of things with that. You will see on your chairs, those of you that are here at church today, um, different colored circles. So the theme of VBS this year is Knights of the North Castle. And so uh, we ask that on those circles you would write a message or a prayer. You can just write your name. And the, um, the dragon, the body of the dragon will be made up. These will be its uh, scales. So we want our church body to make up the body of the dragon. So if you'll write a message uh, for our children or a prayer for VBS on there, we'd appreciate that. Uh, today after lunch, I'm sorry, after service today, there will be a training with lunch provided. Um, there's also child care provided, I believe, right? So we need tons of volunteers for VBS next weekend. It's only one day, only six hours. So if you would come and um, come to the training right after the Ignite service today, we would love that. Uh, on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock, our new pastor, Pastor Amanda, is having coffee at Liberty Coffee House. I went this past week. It was so much fun. I got to meet some uh, people that have been members of the church for a really long time that we haven't met just because we don't go to the same service. So go meet some people in the church that you might not know and get to know Pastor Amanda a little bit better. Um, last couple things, joys and concerns. We want to pray with you um, as we uh, share in our celebrations and burdens. So if you will text 361-210-6720. It's on your bulletin as well. Text all your prayer requests there so we can add them to our weekly prayer list. And uh, lastly, thank you for being such a generous church. We ask that, uh, or we want to let you know that there are various ways for you to give. You can give in the offering baskets at the back of the church, also on the app, it's super easy, as well as on uh, the website, fumcvictoria.com slash give. And uh, now let's continue to worship as we prepare our hearts for Pastor Amanda's message. Thank you. Come join the song. Come join the song. Lift your voice as heaven and earth give praise. Fall to your knees at the feet of the Son of the One True God. Yeah. 
Yes, God, your love endures. Your love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever and ever. His love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever and ever. His love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever is love endures. Forever and ever. We have found our home. We have found our peace. We have found our rest in the one who loves. He will light the way. He will lead us home as we offer all to the one who saves. Sing, we found our hope. We have found our hope. We have found our peace. We have found our rest in the one who loves. He will light the way. He will lead us home as we offer all to the one who saves. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever and ever. Church, you can be seated if you want to be seated, or you can keep standing. It's totally up to you. But um, Let's go into a time of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for bringing us here today, God. God, we ask for your spirit this morning. God, we just acknowledge again that your love is our hope. God, that you hold our peace. You lead us, God. You have a plan for us. God, I just ask today that we be able to rest in your love, God. And that if it seemed far away, God, I ask that today you bring that love close, that you give us the grace to see it again, God. Let us rest in your grace, God. Let us walk in your grace. It is in your son's precious and holy name that we ask. for my soul through every storm I will hold to you with endless love all my fear is swept away
higher. Lord God, we just thank you for your love, God. I ask that your spirit be on Pastor Amanda as she comes up here in a minute to give her message, God. I ask that you'll open our ears, help us to set aside anything that might distract us from hearing from you today, God. We wait on you expectantly, God. It's in your son's name we ask. everyone good morning I'm like is it afternoon Ooh, 1121 we're good we're good I'm so excited to finally be here a whole service y'all are stuck with me pastor Wade gets to be over there the whole service so I know he was excited to just kind of like experience that right and take his time and so I'm excited I'm excited to be here what a blessing it is to be here so today we're going to talk about community and living in community and sharing our lives with one another so if you would like to if you have your Bible app Hebrews 10 is where we're going to be if you have your Bible awesome uh, I'm going to be reading from the NRSV New Revised Standard Version so if you would like to pull that up go ahead you have some time right now uh, awesome again Bible app whichever We'll probably have it on the screen also as well. Uh, so how many of us prefer, I say us, I'm including, how many of us prefer to spend our evenings sitting at home, hanging out, and relaxing? Okay, a couple of people. Okay, yeah, don't be ashamed, y'all. If you like to spend your evenings chilling at home, I'm with you. I love to do that. I feel like I've been wanting to do a lot of that this week. So how many of you prefer to be outside working? Okay, be outside working. You like to stay busy. You, like, you have things to do. 
okay, a couple, yes. I was like, nobody, okay, yes. And how many of us prefer to, you are refreshed by hanging out with other people, sharing a meal together. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of hands for that. That is me too. I love to just be refreshed by hanging out with people. Um, That's something that I enjoy doing as well. So recently, uh, George and I were invited to a game night. And um, I'm blaming them because they kept saying at that game night, you better watch out or you're going to end up in the sermon on Sunday. So (laughs) that's kind of what we're doing here, y'all. So uh, I was invited to game night, and I don't know what the name of the game was that we were playing. I was kind of lost most of the time, but I love to to learn about new games. Um, I was ranked the lowest. I had no points most of the game. I almost ended the game with no points. So I was ranked the the lowest points, um, but... I had tons of fun, and we had lots of laughs, so I feel like that filled me up, and that was totally worth it, right? Uh, So I won with that. Uh, Side note, uh, the last will be first in the kingdom of heaven. So I was like, you know what? I'm last, but in eternity, I'll take that. Amen. Uh, So yeah, so, so it was interesting. So we had this game, and it had different types of cards that you pick up based on the dice that you roll. And so there are some action cards, right? And so some people, uh, one person, uh, Will, right? Will got the card. You had to do push-ups, right? Did you have to do push-ups? You sit uh, push-ups. He had to do, I don't remember, 11 push-ups or something like that. And then George got a card where he had to do sit-ups. So he was like, oh, my gosh, everyone's just watching me do 15 push-ups. And you have, like, 30 seconds to get it done, right? So you're going and going. So I was like, okay, I finally got an action card. And so I was like, mine is going to be papitas. It's something that I'm going to be able to do. I'm going to – I got this, whatever it is, right? (laughs) So I rolled the dice, and I picked up the action card, and it said whatever number I had on that dice, that's how many seconds I had to hold um, the dice in the air with my feet. And so I was like – okay, these are my new friends. I have not had a pedicure in a long time. Let's see how this goes, right? And so I don't even remember how many seconds it was, but it was too many seconds too long. I was so nervous about holding these dice, but I wanted some points because I didn't want to be the last one, right? So as I, (laughs) there's so many different ways you could do this. So as I was like, I don't know my interpretation of this, so I I put the dice on the floor and I picked them up with my toes. And so I was holding them like this, right? And so I have people offering criticism. Why didn't you use two feet? That was George. Why did you use two feet? And people supporting me and cheering me on. It was awesome as I held as tightly as I could onto these dice. And like, oh, Lord, please don't let me drop them. My feet are getting sweaty here, squeezing somebody's dice between my toes. So finally, I didn't make it. I didn't get points from that, y'all. You just hear like a bloop, bloop. And then everybody starts laughing because you could totally hear it hit the floor. Uh, It was a little embarrassing, but I got it. I got it because I loved all of the support. And so, you know, looking back and reflecting now, I could see that that is what living in community is all about. Amen. It's about being surrounded by these people who are cheering you on, even if you're doing sometimes crazy things, right? They're offering you feedback and advice sharing their wisdom with you. Uh, Sometimes we have different points on the scoreboard. Sometimes some of us are at the end with hardly any points, and some of us are like people are tied, right? And so we know that we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to others, but that we are all here to live in community with each other um, as we navigate life together. Amen. We know that God has designed each of us with the need and desire to live in community. Let's pray. Awesome, God. Thank you, Lord, so much for today. Lord, we pray for this message, God, that it would be from you, God, that these words would be the words that you need your people, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that you need us to hear, Lord. We pray for open hearts and open minds as we just take in this message and are encouraged, Lord, and prayerfully reigniting that desire to to fellowship, Lord, to come together, to be refreshed, and to hear the message that you have for us. All these things we pray in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. So we're going to jump right into Hebrews 10, 19. Again, so if you have your, your app, let's get that ready, your Bible, and we'll just jump right in there. Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, 
with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, with our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. So verse 23, friends, here it talks about the importance. I'm really going to work on through verses 23 and 24. That's going to be kind of our focus through 25. And so in verse 23, it says that we are to share our hopes with each other. And if, as you continue, it says that we're to provoke. Provoke can also mean like to agitate or aggravate, irritate each other. So I think some of us have that down. That's me. And we're also, but aggravate each other towards love and good deeds. And we're not to neglect a meeting together, but rather we are to encourage one another. So our challenge this week is going to be our Hebrews 10, 10 challenge. Let's say that together. Hebrews 10. One, two, three. Hebrews 10. Okay, we're awake. Awesome. So our Hebrews 10 challenge is a promise and agreement that we're making to each other this week. And we're going to hold each other for the following. So one, that we are going to share our hopes with each other. So I encourage you this week, as you maybe get busy with life and the day, maybe you, you come home to your spouse or you bump into some, one of us somewhere, be like, hey, let me share a hope that I have with you, my hopes, some things that are going great in my life. What can we share with each other as we navigate throughout this week? Number two, we're going to provoke or irritate each other towards love and good deeds, right? But we are going to do that for each other, and we'll go into these a, in a, a little deeper in a minute. And we're also going to encourage each other and not neglect meeting together. I group those together because I feel like when we are meeting together, we should be encouraging each other. Amen. So my prayer for this week is that we will meet each of those three challenge points. And we're going to, again, break those down right here. So first off, we want to share our hopes. Let's say that together. Share our hopes. Awesome. So this week we're going to share our hopes. And so I wanted to share a hope um, that I was able to experience with you all. And, and I pray that it gives you hope in this. And so um, I don't know if you all know this or not, but our youth and our children's ministry are on fire. Amen. So they have just been having so many events. We just had basic training camp. We, I feel like I've just been so spending so much time with those ministries, and it has been such a blessing to see our youth and our children flourish in, in all the things that God has done in them and to see them learning about Jesus in a very real way. And so uh, recently I attended a youth planning meeting, and we were talking about uh, rebranding and what does it look like to rebrand and, you know, what's our mission um, and all of those different pieces. And so, um, so yeah, so Andy, um, if y'all don't know Andy, he's a bomb.com. And so Andy had, he was leading the meeting, and he invited youth and parents to, like, this brainstorming, ra uh, brainstorming meeting. And so in that, he asked the youth, um, why do you come to youth? Like, what motivates you? What's your, your reason for coming? And so I feel like maybe they were a little hesitant to give their answer, but they pretty much all said for the hangout time. Like, we love to come because of the hangout time. I was like, that is me. I go to meetings. I like to go places for the hangout time. Amen? And so it's interesting, though, um, did they lose points because they didn't say we come to learn about Jesus? I think that was their hesitation. We come to learn about Jesus, right? No, they didn't lose points in that because what they want at their core is that's biblical. God planted that desire in them to want community, and they come because they desire and seek that community. So I was so proud in their answers in wanting that. Um, and they recognized that importance of living together in that hangout time because God planted that desire in them. Isaiah 40, 30 reads, Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friends, at times we experience hopelessness, right? We experience feelings of exhaustion, uh, we're in need of having our strength renewed. I know when I don't spend time with God, when I don't spend time with other believers, I am just feeling drained and exhausted, and I'm needing that refreshment. So we know that when we put our hope in the Lord, when we share our hopes with one another, our strength 
will be renewed. And sometimes we need to remember that the renewal God promises us may not come from binge-watching series, Amanda. So I know sometimes when I'm exhausted and my brain is just done, I'll just mindlessly, mindless, okay, Facebook, okay, TikTok, okay, Snapchat, and I am not rested in that. I find no rest. I still feel exhausted after that. And I think we all know why, right? And binge watching, you know, I mean, sometimes these episodes are really good, y'all, so <laughs> we can't resist. But I mean, that is not where we're going to be refreshed. And we know that refreshment comes, one, taking time to be in the presence of God, right? We know that to spending time in his word, in prayer with him, but also spending time with the believers, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, because we know that that community, that refreshing that comes when we share our hope with one another I- is more refreshing than anything else that man that is man-made that we can make or build ourselves. Number two for our Hebrews 10 challenge, we will provoke uh, ag- uh irritate each other right towards love and good deeds we're going to provoke each other towards love and good deeds so we're going to have fun with this one so this week when your spouse or your sibling or your kids kids with your parents right when they're saying hey you're bothering me you can remind them at church i made a promise to you that i was going to provoke you but towards love and good deeds right so we're going to encourage each other towards love and good deeds so i know so the translation that i was using like i mentioned is nrsv so it does read, let us consider how to provoke enough, uh, one another towards love and good deeds, which is a version I really like because um, I, if you know me, I'm used to like being and having my friendships where it's like, like you uh, like uh, a picar, like each other, like you like poke at each other, you kind of sting at each other, right? And side note, Paul was very good at writing his, right, when he'd write his letters, he was using some strong words because some of us, if you're just kind and gentle to us, we may not always take it, right? And so sometimes we need to be lovingly telling people and a little, uh, a little more aggressive sometimes, maybe sometimes irritating, right? Provoking one another towards love and good deeds. I know I cherish those deep friendships when I have someone who can pull me aside and like, hey, I think you're doing too much. Or hey, I don't know if you should have maybe responded to George in that way. Or hey, I don't know how I feel about this. Because those people who love me and care for me, they are going to speak truth into me um, because they love me and that they want the best for me. Um, So this translation was fitting for me when I broke it down, but other translations read differently. So I wanted to share those with you. Let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds. Let us think of ways to motivate one another towards love and good deeds. And let us consider one another in order to stir up. I feel like that one's kind of like you're stirring up the drama, right? You're stirring each other up. We're getting each other excited um, to, to participate or to be a part of those love and good deeds. Um, so aside from Hebrews 10, let's get some more biblical truth to this. In First uh, Thessalonians 5.14, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. So we know that we can't just randomly start going up to people and and criticizing them and like, hey, you're being lazy. Hey, you're not doing the right things because we know that if someone were to do that to us, I know if someone came up to me and started criticizing me, um, I may not be as receptive as someone who, who I know loves and cares for me. So we know that when we live in true community with our brothers and sisters, that we've spent time sharing our hearts and our struggles, our burdens, but also our joys and, and the things that, that uh, our hopes, right? When we share our hopes with each other and we've built that relationship, we're able to be more receptive to one another But we know that we have to be patient with others because sometimes, again, they're not ready. Hopefully they've prayerfully considered what they need to tell us and that we have prayerfully considered what we need to tell them to provoke them towards those love and good deeds. Number three, we will encourage each other and not neglect meeting together. Again, our Hebrews 10 challenge for this week. We're going to encourage each other and not neglect meeting together. 
Um, and so, y'all, since I've gotten here, since we've gotten here, I feel like we've been like boom, 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 right? So many different events. And if you have not had an opportunity to plug into something that's taking place here, we have so many opportunities to do that. If you'd like to serve, if you'd like to go be refreshed, if you'd like to be a part of community, I encourage you to pick up a bulletin. And again, there's so many ways. Check us out on social media. There's always posts. Again, if you have questions, we'll we can talk about it. But there's just so many opportunities to meet together as community um, here at FUMC Victoria, right? And so I've been able to, oh my gosh, meet with the United Methodist Women, gone over to Twice Blessed as many times as I can, um, VBS at Telfner UMC, and the list goes on. And it's just been a wonderful time to, and our coffee times, right? I was thinking of Brittany, right? How we were able to go have our coffee and just meet people who have never connected before and then were actually connected in a way like through women's ministry and it was so cool to see that and to be a part of that and that's what happens when we meet in community friends we're able to connect with people we're able to hear testimonies to hear sorrows or burdens that others have been carrying by themselves um, but we also get to hear the hope that they have in Christ Jesus amen and that is a beautiful thing Romans 1, 11, for I am longing to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Friends, when we live together, when we spend time in fellowship and sharing our, our spiritual gifts with one another, we are mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Uh, and now we know that there are some relationships that empty our cups and we recognize that and we're just going to accept that because there's some people who need some more pouring into than others and so we're accepting that we have those relationships we are we pour into those people but we also make sure that we get poured back into as well and make sure that um with, and that can happen in a small group or it can happen in a larger group. I know some of our Sunday school groups are able to use that time to be refreshed as well. And whatever that looks for you, um, as long as we have a group of people that we can meet with together, at one or two people to share our disappointments, our brokenness, and our hurt, uh, to seek advice and godly counsel and wisdom. Um, because when we share in that community, there's that weight that's lifted and those uh, in those sharing of those burdens and there's a sweetness to seeing friends rejoice uh, with us and in the celebrations of life. So in the most recent edition of the newsletter, if you haven't picked one up already, I don't, I know we have some, I think, uh, towards the office area. You can also get them mailed. I think they're also available on the app. And so uh, I was reading through it as I was preparing, you know, this service for uh, the, 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 the sermon on, co on community. And so I was reading Pastor Wade's, uh, he has like the front, the front cover, right? Invitation to worship. And when I saw that, I was like, invitation to community as well, right? And so I was reading through, you, can see, you can't see, but I have like amens and I underline stuff and I circle stuff. I'm like, yes, I don't even think I've talked to him about this. I put hearts on things like, yes, and, and I, it just excites me, the, the things that are happening at our church. And so one of the things I'm like, I know I put it over here, so he did say, um, so he was talking about how people have been impacted by this church without ever stepping foot on in any of our worship services. And so I guess most of them have been watching online or they've been amp impacted through some of our outreach ministries and they've been blessed in that way. And I was like, that is awesome. Praise God that people give him that, um, that feedback when he sees them in public. And it was such an exciting thing to be able to know. Um, but he went on to say, the impact of God's message is more fully felt and realized when we are able to be more fully in community. So we know that um, discipleship doesn't just happen on a Sunday morning from watching a church service online. We know that we can be fed in that way, but we know that community cannot just be built by talking a little bit with each other before and after service, just like we know life-changing transformation doesn't just happen overnight. We know when we eat healthy and we exercise, we get results, but that probably is not going to happen overnight. O over time, it's going to take our patience, it's going to take our commitment, and it's going to take some action for us. So we have to make an effort to pursue that godly 
community. I know for some of us, it's easier to be home and to be antisocial sometimes. It's easier to rest, right? I said I like to rest at home. Yes, that sometimes that's easier. Uh, sometimes it's easier for us to say that we're too busy to go to that Sunday school class. I don't want to wake up early before service to make it to Sunday school. Or uh, we've got too many things happening this week to serve at, in, you know, at Twice Blessed or in any of our ministries. Or maybe sometimes we're just too tired to even get to certain, y'all, just so you know, we need a lot of help with all of our services. I don't know, I'm totally going off script here, but have you seen how much Pastor Wade does on the Sunday? He, um, he so he, I, I'm probably, I shouldn't, okay, so he does a lot. And so I'll be over there. So after he finishes a traditional, he sets up cameras. Then he comes in here. He sets up all these cameras. And then he's like checking sound. He's doing all of these things. I'm like, oh my goodness. And he's making sure we have all the communi communion elements out. We need help. So if you're interested in serving before service, helping make sure that we have things settled, I, I mean, we would love to have you. We can talk after service if you're interested in that, but we, we need help in making sure that this place is a welcoming place for all of the people who are coming to us and the people who are here. Um, but we, we know that when we do this, when we serve, we are being in community with each other, that this isn't just, you know, just to serve and be in community, which is not a just thing, but this is an investment in ourselves. We begin to build community with people that we have, would have never spoken with, and when we connect and when we serve, we grow together, and we begin to see that shift, not only within ourselves, but within the church and within building the kingdom. So in my short time here, right, I've heard so many stories, beautiful stories, people sharing their hearts about the amazing people that attend here. Some people have said, I have no idea where I'd be if it were not for this community of believers who surrounded me in one of my most difficult seasons of life. I had the opportunity to be at Twice Blessed, and, and a lot of the ladies were telling me, I don't know where I'd be without serving here at Twice Blessed. They have just connected in that ministry there with the ladies who are just there encouraging each other and loving on each other, and it's just been beautiful to see. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as some are in the habit of of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So let us not forget our Hebrews 10 challenge this week. Remember that we're going to hold each other accountable for what? Do y'all remember the three things we need to hold each other accountable for? Who wrote it down? Share our hope. We're going to provoke each other towards love and good deeds, and we will encourage each other, and we will not neglect meeting together. Amen. Let's pray awesome and beautiful lord thank you lord so much for today thank you for this message and this reminder that we are to live in community this invitation to worship this invitation to live together with our brothers and sisters in you lord i pray that as we go out this week that we may share our hopes with each other and and maybe in sharing our hopes with each other not just each other lord but the people that you send us to that they're able to see that light from you that is so reflective, God. That they're able to see that light shining from us, God. And that they're able to say, you know what? I want some of that. I want some of that hope. That in spite of everything, Lord, in spite of all of our circumstances, that our friends know that we've experienced, God, that they're able to say, you know what? Give me some of that Jesus that you have, Lord. And Lord, as, as we go this week, I pray that we're able to remember to encourage one another. Not just with our hopes and sharing our testimonies and our hearts with each other, sharing our burdens, Lord, but in doing so that we're able to, to come closer to one another. The people that you have put before us, God, the people that you have called us to, for us to pour into, and the people who will pour into us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so much for this beautiful day and all of the ways that you continue to work in our lives and in our hearts. All these things we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. So today we have...
an opportunity to come to the table. And I can't think of a more precious and beautiful way and act to do together as a community of believers um, than, taking, than partaking in the sacrament of holy communion with one another. I'm just going to drink some water here. Now, friends, we have a chance to, to repent and ask for forgiveness of our sins as we just have this honor of being able to take the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11.23b reads, The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also, and after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all of us, for each of us. Amen. Let us pray. Awesome and heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you pour out your spirit over these gifts of the bread and of the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, broken and shed, and that we may have life abundant and life eternal. And Lord, we ask that you pour out your spirit upon those gathered in this place today and those watching online and engaging with us in that way as well, Lord, just pour out your, pour out your spirit in their homes and the places that they are. Lord Jesus, we ask that we may be the body of Christ over the world, broken and yet blessed in the abundance of your grace and of your mercy. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is not the table of the United Methodist Church or of any denomination. Uh, this is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's an open table, an open invitation to partake in communion with our brothers and sisters, with our community of believers that we have here. The only requirement that we must fulfill in coming to this table is that we repent and ask for forgiveness of our sins because we know that Jesus invites each and every one of us to that relationship with him. So next up, I'm going to do a prayer of asking God for the forgiveness of our sins. If you have something that you're carrying, I encourage you to talk with God about that, um, or you can join me in this prayer. Awesome, God. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, you know our hearts, and you know our struggles. You know the the troubles that we've faced, the burdens that we're carrying. You know our joys, and you know the depths of our hearts. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. We give over our sin to you, Lord. We know that when we leave this place, God, that we will be washed clean. That there's a fresh slate, a new start, and that we will not carry any of that brokenness anymore, Lord. We're leaving our sins at the foot of the cross, God, and as we partake in this community together of holy communion, God, we know that you are at work in this place, and we can feel your spirit is poured out upon each of us, Lord. And so, Father God, again, we repent, Lord, and we just ask for your forgiveness of our sins. Amen. I'd like to invite my communion helpers up, please. And then from the
Band as well, right? Yes. I'm going to want to make sure I have the band as well, please. How do you do it? Yep. Okay. Okay. There we go. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of the oh, body of Christ broken for you. There we go. The blood of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ for us now. The body of Christ broken for you, brother. The blood of Christ for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Here you all go if you want to. So we'll have our communion helpers right over here. Here we go. Yeah. And there you go. Thank you, Pastor. And so we can, we'll go ahead and make a line this way, and then we'll do our communion, and then you can go out that way. Come, the table is open, friends. All right, church, if you will please stand and join us as we continue in worship. Oh, I love to hear the sound of creation. The wind and the rhythm and the rain. Oh, the thunder, it speaks of your power. But there's something in the sound of the Washed in the roar of the ocean, from peace in the echoes of a cave, and the trees of the field they clap their hands. There's something in the sound of the saints from the lips, from the lips of those you save. A redemption song will rise with the sound so cracks the sky oh we sing hallelujah oh we sing amen hear the sound of the sea 
ready to head out. I see, I see that, you know, heading out to Zion, that's us heading out to lunch singing hallelujah, amen, right? Woo, y'all, I'm pumped up. I hope that, that you're able to be refreshed as well as we met today as a community of believers. A couple of uh, things to remember. So we have, again, VBS happening right after service. Um, anyone who's interested, please, we need volunteers. We need people to help us as we serve our community, those kiddos that God is sending to us. So there's going to be the volunteer training. Lunch is provided, y'all. You're hungry. You want to be fed spiritually. You want to give back. Go over to the children's building. We would love for you to serve in that way. And don't forget on these, uh, these are scales, right? Scales for our dragon for VBS. If you can't make it to volunteer, fill out one of these, put a prayer on there. And I ask that you pray this week for our kiddos that will be participating, for our volunteers that will be participating. Prayer words of encouragement. You can leave it at the back table um, if you would like to at any of our back tables, and that way we can make sure that we receive these as well. Church, I pray that you are blessed. Again, let us share in our refreshments. We're supposed to share our hopes with one another, provoke each other towards good love and good deeds, and just make sure that we are able to come together for encouragement and fellowship. Have a blessed week, ch week church. We love you so much. We'll see you next Sunday.